All right, yo guys, I was just watching this video about a young American manager who is playing, going to be playing in the Bundesliga next season and the bizarre tactics that this young man employs. Now, I've got to admit to you that I was watching it and it be, I was shell-shocked by the bizarre nature of these tactics and I was just thinking, why in the world am I not filming this on the channel? So we're going to react to, this is about the five minute mark, about halfway through this video. We're gonna get into the tactics of Fabian Hertzler, who is gonna, he, he's the manager for St. Pauli. And we're gonna see these bizarre tactics. I'm, when I say bizarre tactics, I've never seen anything like it. I was absolutely shocked by this. Let's get into this. So how did a now 31 year old manager create an entirely new and unique way of playing with an eclectic mix of footballing exiles. Now, I just want you to know, this thumbnail is not clickbait. The team it's regularly ridiculous. abandons the midfield in favor of spreading the pitch as wide as possible and pushing what seems like the entire team into the opposition's box. Formations are simply ways to envision how a squad might light up. Hmm. But with St. Pauli under Hertzler, it's better to start with the basic understanding that no player outside of the goalkeeper plays a specific position. You'll <laughs> regularly find defenders in attack, wingers in defense, and central strikers on the wing. This is all because Hertzler prefers space and structure over personnel. Formations, formations. These guys... So something that is interesting that it was mentioned early on in the video, and I, I wasn't going to comment on it, but I think it actually does make a lot of sense, is that the culture surrounding the club is a far-left kind of culture. Very rebellious, very much... Um, heavy emphasis on freedom and 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 they just so so they they have this just culture surrounding the club that's very far left so it's actually kind of uh, interesting to me that the club that has that sort of far left ethos would also have a style of play that basically says screw the conventions of football we are going to play our own way and we're going to do this this kind of rebellious thing and we're going to play with uh, a heavy emphasis on freedom and we're just going to let player you know we're going to we're going to do things that are extremely progressive and haven't been seen before and we're going to test the limits of what we can do on a football pitch i think that's pretty cool now as a now as a person and i'm not getting i'm not even getting into the political sides of this uh, in this video but i temperamentally tend to be a more conservative guy just temperamentally i prefer structure and systems and this is terrifying to me that you just just say hey go guys just free for all just like let's that's what it seems like I'm, i might be completely misunderstanding or mischaracterizing i am brand new to the game by the way when does that excuse run out when do i get when do i have to stop saying that i'm new to this game i don't know i'm, I'm new to this game and this is terrifying to me, this idea of that just, it's so fluid and it's so like everyone just kind of roams around, but apparently it works. So um, if it works for this club, then it's exciting, an exciting experiment to watch. But I think it's hilarious that this is, that they do this. Let's just say for simplicity's sake that the squad regularly starts in a 3-4-3, which I would argue that they do. The squad is perfectly happy to set up during a rest defense period in a 5-2-3, and just as happy to fall into that shape if the initial press doesn't win the ball. In possession, things get wild and wacky. <laughs> two defenders, three defenders, two midfielders, <laughs> zero midfielders, three attackers, five attackers, seven attackers. It all depends on the situation. And let me just say this right now. I have been watching and analyzing soccer for the better part of 20 years. I have never, never seen a squad play this fluidly Players wow. having such a deep understanding of space and where they're supposed to be. And what I mean by that statement is really simple. When one player moves into space, the most efficient next player moves into the right space left behind. The team seems to be completely selfless in the sense mm -hmm. that attackers are not too proud to sit and defend and defenders are confident enough to step up into the middle or attacking third. And what I really love about this tactic is that the team maintains a ruthless grip on possession by putting numbers into the attacking spaces. We've seen this a little bit with Brighton and the Columbus crew. Their defenders and goalkeepers will hold the ball at their feet to bait the press out of position. 
Now I want to talk a little bit about how this team scores, and I found it's one of three ways. The first is from their possession, and when they're able to throw numbers forward and create overloads. It's not uncommon to see five players attacking mm. an opponent's back line. Now we'll see here the skill and ability to break down a defensive line with numbers, and really this yeah. isn't rocket science. You can science. see it. This strategy is all about overloading space with more players than your opponent. Now the second way this team scores is through their counter-pressing. After losing possession, they'll try to win the ball once, high up the pitch, and catch the opponent off guard and off balance to create advantages going towards goal. The third is much less sexy, but I wouldn't be doing this team justice if I didn't mention it. Hertzler has made a concerted effort to score more from set pieces and corners this year and concede less from them. This has been something that he's mentioned as part of his pragmatic education as a coach in lower divisions mm. where... Sometimes maybe athleticism and your ability to physically be dominant is more important than the technique on the ball. Honestly, honestly, that's something that as a Spurs fan, I wish Ange would focus a little bit more on. Now, now I wonder if he's just saying to the media that he doesn't care about set pieces and actually he does take it seriously. Uh, But it does seem like, man, we concede so much off of set pieces and he seems to think that's not important. But to him, I guess what's most important is scoring from from the attack and having just better, you know, attacking play. But I just, I just like I do see that a lot of teams are moving towards really taking set pieces seriously and trying to score off set pieces. And man, if that's where football is going, if that's where other clubs are going, they're really focusing and honing in on set pieces. Then I would. I would say, man, we got to get good at defending those <laughs> because they're going to get better at scoring from them. So that actually does need to be a priority. Set pieces seem to be where where tactics are headed in football these days. Now, I mentioned the counter press, and the coolest thing for me watching these games wasn't on the attacking side, and this really surprised me as I was reviewing the games. It was the defensive nature of this team. Because FC St. Pauli controls so much of the possession, they're set up nicely to attack and counter press on the first action when they lose the ball. If the ball isn't won in that pressing action, the team will reset into a compact 5-2-3. Mm. And you should not think about this team as a high pressing team because they're just not. That's mm. wrong. The line of confrontation is usually at the halfway line or deeper. Okay. We should really be thinking of this team as a intense defensive unit because that's what they do. It's more about the intensity of your actions rather than where you're taking those actions. Mm. When they do lose the ball, the high press makes the opponent panic. When they don't have the ball and they're back in the That's box. fascinating, and that is something worth thinking about. Man, I really do need to go get my coaching uh, my coaching licenses because I'm learning so much and I'm kind of trying to figure out this and that. But that's an interesting idea that it doesn't matter where you begin your actions so much as it does the intensity that you perform it. So I, you know, doesn't he's not so concerned about where you begin your press or where you begin your um, your confrontation or engagement. It's just how intense are you going to engage? That's 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 an interesting thing, and that's something worth thinking about. 